What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Odin coming back with another video, and today we're going to be going through Lightstream tutorials. So for those that watched my previous video, you saw that I mentioned Lightstream and went through some of the basics, and so now I'm actually going to make a video dedicated to walking you through the actual process itself. There is one step that I'm not going to be able to show just because I cannot unsign out once I've given permission to Lightstream, and that is one thing that you're going to have to do is give Lightstream permissions to have access to your channel. Very similar to Streamlabs OBS and many other encoder softwares where you have to give that kind of permission, but you're not gonna be able to see that because I can't really undo it at this point in time but I will show you the basic process and also how to build your first scene and of course I'm gonna have to do that without my camera on in order for it to come up correctly So here we go so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to www.golightstream.com and once you go there you're going to want to go up to this little top page where it says get started. Now some people might be asking what are these different options. So basically your first option is the one we're going to go through today and that is the studio version which is all in browser. The other two options are actually going to be using other encoding software that you can also use in conjunction with Lightstream, which is actually pretty cool. But for this purposes, this is going to be the simplest form of it, which is something you don't need to download anything else for. All you need to do is actually to use this in browser. So when you click on that, it's first gonna ask you to sign into your account which of course is not popping up here because I've already signed into it on my end. But for you, it will ask you to basically sign into your account and give that basic permission to have access to your account. Now, some people might not want to do that. And as I mentioned in my last video, you might want to just use straight OBS for that because the only thing OBS needs is your stream key. And if you want, you can change your stream key all the time if you want to protect your channel in that way. But for those that don't, for those that want to be able to start learning some of this new software, but maybe don't feel the need to start downloading everything, Lightstream is going to be what's going to be the best thing for you. So once you actually sign up for your account and sign in with your YouTube account, every time you go back to the page, it's going to ask you to sign in with your email address. And so for me, Odin's movie blog at gmail.com is going to be what the is uh, email that's attached to. And then you'll get into this dashboard right here. And so it's actually pretty straightforward. Once you get to this point, you have these places where you can build your layers meaning all the different things you want to be seen on screen. You can also, of course, build and, and add different scenes and transfer between them during the actual mixing as well. But let's start off first with some of the basics. And so first off, you're going to want to know what kind of internet connection you have. If you have a really strong internet connection, then you can go ahead and stream at 720p, 30 frames per second. If you have a camera that can capture 60 frames per second, which my uh, C9, C920 cannot, then you can also choose this as an option. But for those that maybe don't have the best internet service, you might wanna go ahead and stick with the 480p 30 frames per second. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna change, as you can see, the size of the actual image because that is not just the resolution, it's also the size of the image being talked about here. But my computer can actually take 720p 30 frames per second. It can actually take more than that, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna go ahead and keep it here. And so what are some of the first things that we can start doing? Well, let's go ahead and start building a scene. So. The first thing that I want to do, because it's something that I like to do in my streams, is I want to make sure that I have my camera set up. And so it's going to pop up here where it wants to use your permission. It wants to either give permission to Lightstream to use your microphone and to use your camera. So you're going to go ahead and click allow that. And then you're going to go ahead and choose your various options. Now, as you can see, the Logitech HD program, uh, uh, Pro Webcam 920 is not working because it is already attached to my OBS software, which I've already talked about before. But it'll pop up here. You click on it, and then it'll be there for you to be able to use. And then, of course, you'll have the option to move it around. So since this is not going to be an option for today, let's go ahead and see if we can add an image. And so let's just go ahead and use this. So obviously you can upload your own image or you can use the standard ones right here. And so boom, let's say you upload an image. Let's say it's your logo or it might be something else. You can then move it around anywhere on screen. And anything that's on this screen is what's going to be seen by the people watching your stream. And so therefore, this is something that they would see and this is something that they'd be able to see. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Okay, maybe I want to add in a microphone layer. So microphone, as you can see, there's plenty of microphone options for my, for my computer, but I know that I'm not using this one right now. And so boom, now you can see that it is currently using this and it's actually picking up the levels. You can see the levels are picking up right there. And that just means that the microphone is indeed active and it's being picked up. And that means that when I go live, people are going to actually be able to hear everything that I am saying. So some people might be asking, so what do we go from here? Well, if you ever want to go live, what you can do is just press the go live button and then you'll end up going live. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually to name your stream title, and you can all do that here. You can go and, and allow embedding, meaning that people can actually uh, copy the link and post it onto other sites. You can choose your category. You can also make sure if you want it private, unlisted, or uh, you know unlisted, private, or public, 
whatever it is that you want to do for your own personal channel. You can also name your projects as well. That way you can save it and go back to it whenever you want. So let's say this is going to be the standard look to your stream. Then you can go ahead and just come back every single time and it's going to have this name to the project and you don't have to worry about rebuilding it every single time. But what's also cool about this software, because again, it's something that you don't have to download. It's all browser based is if you click on this arrow on the side, it actually shows you your YouTube chat. So as you can see, Odin's move blog is currently signed in, meaning that when you go live, you can literally stay in this window and your chat will pop up here. If you have super chats enabled, you'll be able to see those as well. Though, of course, if you fall behind in those, you might need to go to your YouTube dashboard to be able to find the stream, uh, the uh, super chat downloads there, or rather the super chat um, screen there. But you'll also be able to see the image as well. So you see stream is offline. So you'll actually be able to see what your image looks like. And so if this is all that you've set up, well, then this is the image that's going to go forward. Now, some people might be asking, okay, well, how can I possibly invite others? Well, here's also where you'll find your green room. So you can actually invite a guest to your project by copying the invite link and pasting it and sending it to somebody. And then when they click on that link, they'll be invited into the stream and then you'll be able to have them on the stream. And then of course, you're gonna to wanna to do this before the stream starts. That way you can get their, you know, if they have a video that they wanna show, you can have that set up in the right location. You can move it around wherever it is that you wanna go. You can make sure that their audio is coming through just fine because again, in this audio mixer, it'll tell you what audio is coming through and if the levels are being read. And once that happens, then you'll be able to actually start the live stream. So as I said before, I think this is probably one of the simplest ways without actually having to download software I do think that there are certain things that are missing from this, but you do actually have the ability to use third-party integration. So let's say you do use Streamlabs, or let's say you do know how to use OBS, and you know how to use some of the uh, alert boxes and all those other various things, but strictly through OBS. Well, you can actually go straight through Streamlabs, and you can go straight through all of these different places where you can build those things. So for Streamlabs, all you need to do is then put the actual URL, and then it'll show up in the box right here. And then let's say it's an alert box, you can go ahead and put it in this right-hand corner, which is what I normally do, You know, change the size of it all you want, and whatever you've set up through Streamlabs, you can actually go ahead and use and utilize here. That way, anytime someone donates or subscribes to the channel, it can pop up right here for you. So anyway, that's just a quick uh, little going through of Lightstream. So please let me know if you want to know more about Lightstream, if you want me to do a little bit of a better tutorial. Because as I said before, because of the fact that I already have all my things set up in various other software programs, I cannot actually utilize my camera the way that I would want to without royally, royally screwing up everything. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. So again, you build your layers here. You go ahead and put a text if you want a text there, an image if you want an image there. You make sure your camera is set up. You make sure your microphone is set up. And then let's say if you have any um, alert boxes set up through other programs, you can actually set it up there. And this is a list of all the different places that it actually supports those browser sources from. And that is, of course, to build one scene. But let's say maybe you want to have a, a scene set up where it's a actual window capture itself. And so let's go to screen scene number two. When you go between scenes, as you can see, everything is now blank. And that means you need to add a microphone. So let's say that you still want to use the same microphone microphone source from before. You're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and add that source to that here. And so for me, I've been using that one. So as you can see, it's still being, it's still being picked up here. But let's say this is something that you want to maybe do on a live stream where maybe you want to show an article. So here's something that you might want to set up you know, at a later time. And what you do is you do a screen share. And then you click yes, because of course, in order to do these, some of these functions, you do need to actually add this in. Um, and so again, add this to Chrome, add extension, and then this will allow you to go ahead and start doing all of these various things. And so of course that's now been added. And so now you can actually choose a specific tab. So let's say that I want to use, uh, so display, I have, I have a display thing. So boom, share screen. And so now this is the tab that I want it to be shared. And now look, that's what's being showed on screen. So let's say you want to cover an article. Well, boom, now you have that up showing on the screen. And also at the same time, you can, of course, add in various other things. But also, too, you can see down here that if you want, you can actually turn the microphone off and on. So let's say that you have a video playing. The video source can actually have its audio coming through if you really want it to. Though, of course, you'll have to go ahead and play with the settings as such. So again, you can change the source. You can stop sharing. You can do all these other things. And that's the reason why I like it, because you can do a lot of different things with it, but also at the same time too, you do have the ability to do it relatively quickly without having to go through too much information. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts about this. Let me know anything that you want to know about uh, about live stream and of course i'll be doing and working on the beginning of my streamlabs obs uh tutorial later today and i plan on trying to get everything working for that one so that way that way uh, you can see everything from the first step all the way to the last but hopefully i'll be able to do that without messing up anything on my end so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video have a wonderful day and as always god bless